Sorry guys, cameraman just had to help me out uh, getting my the camera straight back there. Um, so today we have a treat and a video geared specifically towards those of you who are grateful. I hope you can hear, can hear me better now, I hope. Um, the wireless mic, I think, though, is, is much better. So, as I was saying, um, sorry, we have a video geared towards those of you that are either a shorter rider or a lady rider. Um, I am dedicating this video to Doodle on a Motorcycle and Jerry Palladino. Um, and I'll talk, I'll try to explain more about that to y'all later. Um, but it is definitely something that's been a challenge for me, sometimes more of a challenge than other times, um, depending on which bike I'm riding. I have done some things, and we'll talk about those things to my bike to try to combat that, but it's still sometimes an issue. Um, so, yeah, I am hoping that y'all that are either new or haven't done a lot of stuff to your bike can learn from some of the stuff that I have picked up along the way being a shorter gal. We are really lucky in that it is November, but it is still nice outside today. So we are going to maybe try to tape a couple different videos for you all. We are... Um, riding in Northern Virginia today. So it's even a little warmer because we're a little further south than we typically are in Maryland. Um, it is not my favorite season to ride in the fall. It's Cameraman's favorite season, but I don't like that I know that winter is coming actually because I don't like winter except for skiing all right y'all so this episode by the way is dedicated to doodle if you don't watch her channel go check it out her and I were chatting and talking about what works on YouTube and what doesn't and she said that a lot of people that watch her channel were really interested in specific tips for short riders female short riders so we're going to give some of those because doodle's not uh too tall she's a little taller than me um motorblonde's even shorter than me so we had some of those conversations and jerry palladino gave me a lot of tips also so this also dedicated to jerry and donna because donna is short and so when i went there i learned a lot about how he's customized bikes for short riders so every mechanic that I have talked to has told me not to lower my bike. I know there are some of you that lower your bike and like it lowered and that's totally your prerogative and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I have also heard that it really affects your suspension. So I have decided not to lower my bike. I am about five foot two and a half. The first and most obvious thing that you can do as a short girl rider is wear big shoes. So, when I first started riding, was pretty nervous. Even though I am, you guys know I'm a fashion gal and I'm into heels all the time. I was pretty nervous to ride in anything with a heel. Um, but then, when cameraman and I were in Tennessee, we we're on our way to Nashville. My boots just got a hole when they were wet, and I just stopped at a Harley. And this is what they had, and they actually have probably. Probably a two and a half, three inch heel on them. I will tell you that it has made a huge difference in my ability to taxi this bike. So I don't have an issue when I am riding this bike. It is parking and taxiing. This is the biggest issue for me. So as you can see, 
I have a lot more bend in my knees now than I would have had if I was in flats. I would barely be able to flat foot when I'm in flats. I can barely touch my heel to the ground. This gives me another like three inches, which is huge. So that's the first and most obvious thing. The second thing. Make sure you eat your Wheaties growing up so you get taller. So, you know, Michael, if you had just encouraged me to do that when we were kids, maybe I maybe would need these tips. Maybe that extra three inches you <laughs> right? need, huh? Right. So, second thing is the seat. So, a lot of you guys watched my video on this seat. Saddleman was awesome. I'll link them in the description, too. Um, hooked me up. This is their profiler, and the reason that I got the profiler... Uh, against some of your recommendations is that it is supposed to be low profile meaning there's not a lot of height to the seat so it would bring me closer to the ground um that would have been really particularly important like on my sportster when i was riding that because the seat was so thick the stock seat was so thick i ended up getting a lower harley seat um so i sort of did the same thing here and i think it does probably give me an inch or so a lot of companies, I know Harley makes a lot of like super low seats and low reach seats. Um, when I was trying that Pan Am, they have a specific seat for that that's low plus adjustable seat height. So those are some things specifically with your seat that you can do so that you don't have to lower the bike. Um, along with that, something that makes a huge difference for me is having mid controls. So I'm in this group on Facebook, Harley Riders, or female women Harley Riders maybe. And a lot of them ride slims, which I don't really understand. Um, a couple of them ride a V-Rod. Some of them actually ride Cameraman's bike, a breakout, and they have forward controls. Now, a short rider for me, and I'll show you in a minute on Cameraman's bike, well, sort of, he's got a little issue going, but... Um, <laughs> If I have forward controls, I actually have trouble, because my legs are so short, getting up under the shifter. Um, the rear brake is hard for me to reach when I ride a bike with forward controls. On cameraman's bike, I end up sitting up really high on the tank so that I can reach the controls. So my suggestion would be, if you have a bike that has forward controls, get mid controls. It makes a huge, woo, there goes the bike. Huge difference. Um, in feeling like you are in control of the bike. Um, okay. Other tips and tricks for short riders. Hmm. I had a really hard time, and Michael helped me a lot with this when I first started riding, with parking and taxiing the bike. Um, specifically parking, because you can get into a really bad situation if you pull head into a parking space that is even on the slightest incline. Um, you just don't have the leverage sitting on the bike and taxiing the bike can be a little nerve wracking. I am gonna show you a tip for taxiing the bike in a second. Let's get the sun out of your eyes, sir. So it is important, and I do this every single time now that I pull into a parking spot, I or a, a place where I'm gonna park, I look for a place where I can turn around so that I can pull straight out of that parking space. When Took possible. A, oh, right. Took a while for me to get in the habit of like remembering to do that. So we're like stuck in this spot right now, which you guys know what happened. Um, but I am going to uh, pull this around and sort of give you a demonstration of exactly what I mean. Um, by that. What I mean by pulling in in a place where you can turn around. So for instance, you see back here, right, that there's these cars that are backed in. But if I wanted to, if I was going to say I was going to pull over on the side of the road and park here, I could pull head in. I may have trouble backing the bike out. Somebody that's taller wouldn't, or a larger person probably wouldn't, but I might have trouble with that. So that's not what I would do. I would be smarter. Only because I've had to learn this lesson the hardest. I've been there. Yes.
instead of pulling head in, I got in a position where I could make a full loop. So now I could back the bike in and I can pull it out head on. Any direction you want, right? Correct. So that makes a huge difference. But you always have to be thinking about that every single time you pull into a place. All right. Now a tip for taxiing. I'm pretty strong for my size, but I'm still not a big girl. And this bike is not super, super light. So um, I get really nervous taxiing it. I know that this is the right way to do it. Everyone's told me, mechanics, people that know lots of things about bikes have told me that the right way to do it is stand it up and move it. Now, I used to try to do that from this side. And then I learned that if I do it, ooh, from this side it's better and here's why if i am pushing the bike and it happens to fall i can leave the kickstand down and it will just lean on the kickstand and that will save me from dropping it all right so squeeze the brake pull it and then if i'm taxing it this is not a good place to do it because we're on a hill but if i'm taxing it like this then the kickstand's down and if i happen to drop it it will catch it right. so my pipes are hot right now, so it's hard for me to push too far and lean it against me. But that is a really helpful tip that makes it me more comfortable, not comfortable, but more comfortable moving my bike from the side. Um, and then finally, a last tip that uh, I actually had watched lots of videos on, Doodles, Jerry's, other people, other folks' videos. Um, and that is on a really tall bike, like when I rode the Pan Am or when I ride a sport bike, it's much easier on those bikes. I can do it on my bike, but it is way easier. So, um, it's not as easy on this bike, but still possible and sometimes still necessary because sometimes I'm on uneven ground and if I'm not wearing boots with a heel, I can barely touch on one side. So, um, another tip is to lean the bike put your weight and make it a tripod front wheel back wheel and your left leg to lean the bike on that leg so especially if i can't flat foot on a sport bike or on like an enduro or a you know off-road type of bike then i really have to use that technique with the three points the front wheel back wheel and left leg it allows me to use my rear brake on this side um, and to balance the bike at a stop, at a stoplight when I otherwise couldn't reach. Um, I know I said the last tip, but another tip um, that was tremendously helpful when I went down and trained with Jerry is that he got an extender on the kickstand. I do not have one on this bike, but when I rode his, ele it was Donna's Electroglide, I think. Um, she had an extender because it's you'll I can show you a little bit better on camera and like but but um so his kickstand comes all the way forward and when I'm sitting on the bike I sometimes can't get my foot down to reach the kickstand so what Jerry did is put an extender out of on the kickstand backwards so that you can reach it it has been a huge problem for me when I ride touring bikes like a stock touring bike if I go to a Harley and test ride them or when I was on the Indian Challenger it was also a huge problem I can't reach the kickstand my leg is just not long enough so that's a pretty cheap fix that makes a huge difference in your ability to comfortably ride a touring bike so anyway all you short folks out there ladies and also guys that just have short legs because for my height I actually have pretty long legs but I'm just not a tall person um, I hope that some of these tips will help you and maybe keep you from having to lower the bike if, like me, that's not something that you want to do. Mm, Thanks, nice. guys. I'm going to ask for help. <laughs> so, I didn't know when we were taping the riding footage, which we did before we got to Skyline Drive, that cameraman's bike would get flat so we were actually planning on doing this when we got to our destination we had a park picked out that had a big wide open space but unfortunately the universe had other plans as y'all know from our last video so we made the best of it we had 
more than two hours to wait for the tow company. So we rode for a little while. We got some food. And then we taped this tricks and tips video. So I do hope that it was helpful for y'all. And please let me know if you enjoy this type of content. And we'll try to do more of it. I am certainly not, as many folks have pointed out, an expert at bikes or at riding. This is just, as I said, my journey, what I'm learning. So I wanted to share it with y'all, hoping you can avoid some mistakes that I made. Um, but at any rate, um, I am not professing to be an expert, but will certainly help put out stuff for y'all that I am learning as I go along. So if you enjoy this type of content, let me know and we'll try to do some more of it. I promised y'all a video to Cooters, which is the Dukes of Hazard Museum. And don't worry, that is forthcoming. I think that will be a good one. I think you guys will like it. It's pretty funny. Um, and it's kind of a cool little place. So that this was all during the same sort of trip that we taped a bunch of this. So um, I'll be putting that out. I am trying to get creative with winter content and I am researching Rumble. Lastly, my calendar is out. So if you haven't had an opportunity to buy it, the link is in the description. Thanks guys. Until next time, ride safe. Don't forget to like and subscribe.